Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the South Metro Democratic Women's Council for our 2020 Census Town Hall Forum. South Metro Democratic Women's Council is a group that is a part of the Georgia Federation of Democratic Women. And the Federation of Democratic Women is a sister chapter to the Georgia Democratic Party. Our goals or our purposes are one, to engage women of South Metro Atlanta in a wide variety of political activities. And of course, this could be considered one. Second, provide members with critical information regarding local issues. Number three, organize education and voter registration activities for the community. And lastly, identify and encourage women to run for office at all levels. We meet on the second Tuesday of each month. And of course, now we're doing it via Zoom. But we want you to come join us as members of this organization because we have a lot of work to do this year and years coming up. Thank you again for joining and thank you to our panelists for this evening. I am Hattie Portis-Jones, and it is my honor and pleasure to introduce our moderator for the evening, Ms. Deidre Dukes, news anchor and reporter. When Deidre is not reporting the big story from the field, you can watch her anchor the weekend editions of Fox 5 News at 6, 10, and 11 p.m. Since making the move to Atlanta, Deidre has involved herself in a number of community programs working closely with groups like Junior League of Atlanta, the Center for Black Women's Wellness, the Atlanta Association of Black Journalists, and as an advisor to the American Red Cross Minority Recruitment Program. She is a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Deidre and her son reside in South Fulton and are members of Zion Hill Baptist Church. Deidre Dukes. Thank you. Thank you for that warm welcome and thank you all out there for joining us this evening for what we know is going to be quite a wonderful educational forum for you all. We have a lot of information that we're going to be sharing with you today and we hope to answer all your questions so that there are some of you out there who uh, have been holding off on filling out those census forms. We hope that by the conclusion of uh, our forum here today and in the coming days that you will indeed do so, so that you will indeed stand up and be counted. That is so important, more so important than ever right now. Of course, the 2020 census will determine congressional representation. It will inform hundreds of billions in federal funding every year. It will ensure that we here in our communities get that money that uh, we should be getting, the piece of that pie that we should be getting here in the metro area and beyond. And it'll provide that important data that will impact communities for the next decade. So it's so important on so many levels that you just take the few minutes that it takes. I filled mine out a couple of uh, months ago, it just takes really a few minutes to fill out that census form and it's a very brief form. We're gonna be hearing more about that over the next hour. Uh, joining us for today's uh, census conversational panel, a Fulton County Senior Services Director, Ladisa Onulahu, Wellstar Health Systems, Lynn Scroggins, and Census Outreach Coordinator for Fulton County, Vanessa Thomas. And they all are bringing some wonderful, unique insight into uh, how and why the census is so important in our community here and uh, how we all benefit by taking part in the census. Right now, I'd like to invite the ladies to tell us a bit about themselves and who they are representing today, and as well as speak to initially why the census is so important. And then we're going to uh, ask them all some questions here and give you the opportunity, uh, as you have some questions, we're sure as well, that you'll be uh, asking during this hour. We'll make sure that we present those questions as well. 
So Vanessa, we're going to start with you. Just tell us a bit about yourself and uh, your role as Census Outreach Coordinator. Yes, thank you so much. I am Vanessa Thomas, and I'm a partnership specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau. And my role is, and I'm here today because I want to make sure I help and encourage everyone to help all of us to shape our future. And I will be talking more about the census. Thank you so much, Vanessa. A Wellstar Health Systems, Lynn Scroggins also joining us. And public health and census uh, numbers go hand in hand, Lynn. Absolutely, they do. Uh, I have been at Atlanta Medical Center now for about 20 years, so even before it was Wellstar. And I can tell you that uh, census data is extremely important for us. It uh, certainly allows us to do many of the things that we do in healthcare, and I look forward to talking about that today. I'm so honored to be here uh, with the um, South Metro Democratic Women's Council and appreciate the invitation. So I look forward to talking about how we use census information. And we appreciate you joining us today. Also a Fulton County Services Director at Ladisa Onilagu. And Ladisa, there are just many ways where seniors benefit from the census numbers and the data that's collected. So true, uh, and hello everyone, I'm Ladisa Onilagu, and it's an honor to be with you to talk about uh, the connection with older adults in Fulton County and the collection of census data. Our mission is critical to uh, aging in place, which is very important when it comes to the census and the dollars that are allocated, because based on that information, um, leadership in the local state uh, will determine where funding goes to place hospitals and improve roads um, and to create this environment that supports older adults to age in place. So I look forward to talking more about our services. Now yeah, we look forward to hearing more about that. Uh, Vanessa, I'd like to, to pose the first question uh, to you. I think that's fitting given we're um, discussing the, the census overall, kind of want to get folks an overview as we get started. Of course, at the beginning of the year and, and even late last year, we heard so much about the census. There was really a big uh, gearing up, uh, getting us ready for it. And then the coronavirus hit. And uh, now that's, you know, in recent months captured headlines, but it's still so important that we uh, take advantage of this opportunity to make sure that our voices are heard and, and that we are counted. How are we doing here in Fulton County? Uh, are we on track? Yes, let me just say this. Thank you so much for that question. For a matter of fact, um, Fulton County, and I want to share some results and data with you, but let me start first of all with the national. Our self response for the national level is at 61.6%. Georgia, we're sitting at 57.6%. When we look at Fulton County, we're at 57.1%. Um, South Fulton, I want to shed some light on that, is sitting at 57.3%. And this is the self-response rate as of the 22nd of July. I mean, of June, I'm sorry, of June. So not and bad there are overall, other... but of course we can do better. We're all striving for that 100% yes. response rate, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. We all can do better. And I know we have some others, if you don't mind. I just wanted to highlight some others. For example, we're looking at East Point, which is at 48%, and College Park is at 40.3%. We need, we need everyone's help to help us to get these numbers up. We also have, like, um, Union City is sitting at 48.7%. So we definitely have work we can all do. So this is a great opportunity, and I thank you for it. Uh, Vanessa, let me ask you, uh, a lot of times you hear people say, oh, this is just going to take too much time sitting down and filling out the census. And you also hear people talk about privacy issues. They're concerned about what information they're giving out and how this information will be used. Would you discuss that, please? Yes, absolutely. Um, for a matter of fact, it has nine questions. Um, and, but you would ask a question for each additional person that lives at the residence. But there's like nine questions on there. One thing we want to make sure that everyone is aware that the information you provide is protected. It's confidential. 
And it is protected by law that we do not divulge any of that information. So I want everyone to be assured that your information is protected and your responses are confidential. All of your responses but it's confidential. And I'll have more questions for you, Vanessa, but I'd like to bring a Ladisa in to talk about some of the ways that the seniors in our community specifically benefit. Uh, I don't know how many people are aware, Ladisa, that senior services, uh, the centers that so many of our senior residents frequent, they benefit from these uh, census dollars. And there are four multipurpose centers in Fulton County under senior services. How do they benefit from the census dollars? The centers themselves uh, don't benefit, but the people inside do. Uh, the way that our funding, our budget is set up is to either use 100% uh, of Fulton County taxpayer dollars, and that's what supports our multi-purpose facilities. However, for our neighborhood senior centers, 11 of them in Fulton County own properties. Those are our congregate dining settings. And we receive grant dollars to provide a nutritional meal each day to provide programs that support cognitive health and to maintain their physical health as well. So the census dollars, uh, the funding that we receive through census okay. data does support the neighborhood senior centers. Regarding the multi-purpose facilities, those individuals that come every day and they are the most independent um, still would benefit from funding that supports their ability to age in place. Um, and then the funding also, more importantly, supports our homebound seniors. Uh, those are the ones that are receiving home delivered meals, in-home services like personal care, homemaker and respite, as well as transportation. We receive about a, a little over a million every year for transportation funding um, and about four million total in grant dollars. And because of the data that's collected, we receive funding based on a formula. And so it's so important that seniors do complete that information so that we can have an accurate number and that when the state develops their formulas, then we're appropriated those dollars necessary to provide the services. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, like so many other uh, services right now, the, the physical facilities are closed there for senior services. But if the senior uh, service centers do open before October 31st, uh, will there be opportunities to help our seniors? Uh, should they have questions? They haven't filled out the census forms yet and they might need some help doing so. The one great thing about Fulton County government is that there has been a campaign to message the importance of the census and making sure that residents are aware. Our department, even before we opened the facilities, issued um, flyers and information through our home delivered meals uh, emergency response during COVID. Once we do open, we look forward to providing uh, online instruction because of social distancing. We're going to have to adjust the numbers that are in the facilities versus out. Um, but there are some plans underway to make sure that we can help to support the overall campaign of Fulton County and to message the importance of making sure that uh, seniors complete the census. Thank you. Thank you, Ladisa. Uh, Lynn, I'd like to talk to you uh, a bit about Wellstar Health Systems, uh, how your organization benefits from uh, these dollars when we're all uh, accurately counted uh, through the census. Where is that money used and, and how uh, does the public uh, benefit from it? What might we see, for instance, uh, should we visit one of the uh, Wellstar System facilities, healthcare system well, facilities? Uh, thank you for the question. And I think uh, the, the dollars run uh, so deep and across so many services for healthcare that it's very difficult for me to just say, well, it only benefits Wellstar. It, it benefits every hospital in our community and in every aspect of healthcare. Uh, Wellstar in particular, uh, one thing, has a Center for Health Equity. And through that Center for Health Equity, we do a lot of uh, population biology and epidemiology. So in order for us to understand the prevalence of certain disease groups in our society, in our communities, uh, we use the census data as the base for just about every 
metric that you can think of. So that allows us to understand, for instance, how many people in our communities have diabetes and hypertension and all of the different disease groups, which then allows us to focus services on the needs of the people in our community. So we really try and do that. Uh, we do it uh, very intently every three years. So as you can see, uh, that census data that we collect every 10 years is extremely important for us. Uh, we also, uh, by being in Georgia, are in a certificate of need state. So that means that uh, bed capacity overall, not just WellStar Health System, but every health system uh, ha uh, is calculated in a formula that determines how many beds a certain community needs. And that, that mathematical formula is certainly based as a foundation, we use the census data. We see how many people are in that community, the age groups and all of that uh, to determine uh, bed capacity. Uh, we also, as a health system, all health systems are under something called uh, a stark or anti-kickback laws. And through those anti-kickback laws, uh, we are, are required to have a third party sort of demographic uh, analysis before we can even start recruiting physicians to our hospital. That data is certainly foundational to the census data. So uh, census data first, we determine the population, we determine the disease groups that we have in that community. Then we start to determine what physicians we need. And Lynn, if you can hear us, we just lost your audio. If you can hear us, we just lost your audio, Lynn. So we're gonna have Lynn work on that because I did have a uh, follow-up question for you. Yes. Uh, Lynn, if you could just, can you hear me now? Or I can hear you now. Okay, and we can hear you. Uh, Lynn, my follow-up question for you was, given that uh, this information is so important for our public health systems, mm -hmm. how is a low count, an in inaccurate count, how does that impact our local health care system? Well, certainly. Can you hear her, Lynn? I can't hear her. No. Okay. For some reason, Lynn, when you speak, we can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? I can yes. hear you now. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what's happening. We're fine. Uh, we love but, modern technology. <laughs> I know. Uh, if you could but, just begin uh, again, please. <laughs> certainly. But I think that a few, a, a bad count, if you will, or lower counts than we actually have would result in a, less, a lesser amount of resources for us to actually uh, meet the needs of the community. So that is determined some, in some ways on something like disproportionate share money. And we have lost you again, Lynn. We have lost you again. Um, while we figure out your audio situation. I'm going to um, go back to Vanessa for a moment because uh, Vanessa, we wanted to talk about African American males in particular, um, who are the most undercounted population of the census. If you could explain why that is and what are some of the concerns, whether it be perceived or real, that um, might be the reason we're seeing that to why the count is so low, why um, African-American males in particular are not participating. Well, I, thank you so much for that question. Um, not only African-American men, but African-Americans as a whole is undercounted. Um, several things too, and, and it plays back into the first question you asked me about the um, confidentiality. Um, so the, the Census Bureau, prevents anyone from sharing your information. Many of our African Americans, not of other African Americans, but other undercounted communities. Um, your answers, your 
answers to your questions cannot be impacted by eligibility for government benefits. Oftentimes, government benefits, um, if they feel that that will be impacted by whether or not they respond to the census, not only that, other things, um, plus of government, these have been some of the concerns expressed, even being out in the field. Um, also, too, you think about African-American men, it goes back to, it's a, it's a bigger picture because it goes back to, for example, renters. In the household, if you have individuals staying in your household and you're not on the lease, then what happens is that you're afraid to be counted or if the individual, the homeowner, is afraid to count because they think, well, more people are staying in the home than what's on the lease. So oftentimes, our African Americans as a whole is not counted. That's another reason for the undercounted communities as well. There are many reasons why our African American men are not being counted. For one reason or another, um, like I said, trust in the government, loss of benefits, um, information being shared. But it's not just African American men, it's on a, on a broader scale than just African American men and the undercounted community. And Vanessa, if we could just um, move on to another question as well with you. Uh, many people still have concerns and fears about the question of citizenship on the census. If there's a, going to be a question about citizenship, uh, does the census ask questions about citizenship? And could you discuss why people might have concerns? And if you could really be specific about what exactly is asked in regards to censorship, if anything, and why? Thank you so much That's for that question once again. There is nothing on the census about a citizenship, a citizenship question. There are no questions about citizenship. There had been talked in the administration, I'm sure we're all aware, early on in the, in the and get, getting the questions and getting the questions approved about the citizenship question and um, individuals wanted that question. However, I can assure you those nine questions that you're being asked, nothing is being asked of citizenship. We will count everyone once and only once and in the right place, whether you're a citizen or not. If you're here in the United States, you will be counted. We ask that you be counted. We want you to be counted. Very important to note, and thank you for answering that question. So many people uh, were very concerned about that early on. Uh, Ladisa, if we could kind of dive into um, more on how seniors specifically uh, might benefit from uh, the census and the completion of this data because there may be some who feel that there's no reason for them to, to participate, that there may not be any benefits specifically uh, for seniors and that in fact definitely isn't the case. Uh, that is not the case at all. Uh, just to give a few examples of programs that were funded using census data back in 2015 and these are programs that are still in existence today and the Department of Senior Services partners with various entities um, like uh, the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. And so every year in partnership with FACA, the Fulton Action Authority, uh, we use our multi-purpose facilities to process information and, and the applications for seniors who are in need of that type of support. Um, the census data was used to fund the Senior Community Service Program, uh, which is a partnership that we have with the AARP. Uh, it also supports the Senior Mar Farmers Market uh, Nutrition Program annually, um, as well as the federal transit formula grants um, and elder abuse. I mean, there it, it's not just one individual and in thinking about it singularly, but it's a, it's a, a whole picture, a comprehensive, picture that the federal government will receive through the total number of seniors within Fulton County. And that will support uh, the amount of funding that comes to the state and then to our county. So uh, older adults age 60 and above should be very encouraged that their singular count will support our global reach to, to serve more seniors and to assist uh, more. Well, Celadis, and really, as you were talking, it, it really made me think of just how important it is for um, all of us, uh, older uh, 
people as well as those of us who are young or middle aged who can participate to do so because we really are all in this together. I was just thinking, my mother lives here in Georgia and by my filling out the census form, uh, I initially of course was just thinking about why it was so important for me to do so, but hearing you speak, I'm thinking about all of the ways in which my mother benefits. And I'm sure that hearing you, know, you speak that uh, others in turn might look at the full picture, the totality of it all, of how we all truly benefit not only helping ourselves, but our neighbors as well. Yes, indeed. I hope that everyone will walk away from that and seeing the census in a different light. And like you said, uh, we're helping our parents. They are caregivers. They are the sandwich generations. And then all of us, there's some that may not be in that uh, category right now, but the next decennial census won't be for another 10 years. So there will be more people that will go into that demographic. And because of the information we receive right now and the funding that will be allocated, it will still support over the course of 10 years. Yes, certainly will. So important to take part. Uh, we are also joined uh, today or uh, today's forum by Wellstar Health Systems, Leanne Liska. I know, uh, Leanne, can you hear me? I know that you have your... <laughs> You have your, um, your thing on mute there, but we're going to ask you to join in as well and speak to um, perhaps the, the ways in which we might see uh, Georgia miss out on important uh, health care opportunities should people not take part in the census. Well, and, and as uh, Lynn's partner, because we both work very closely together, we're especially focused in the South Fulton community. What I would say is What's so important about the census is the denominator. So to have everyone registered, everyone fill out that census, and I've even done it myself here in Atlanta, it takes just a minute, you know. It, it really is not labor intensive, and I think we need to promote that um, to everyone who fills it out. But to have that denominator to then, as Lynn said, uh, then create the disparity analysis or those with all of the, um, the uh, you know, high intensive care needs. We partner with FQHCs. Lynn, and Lynn is actually the lead on that, um, making sure that hospitals aren't the only way that uh, our um, citizens access health care. They can access it much easier on an ambulatory basis. So that is very important. And as she said, having a population number, then creating those disease groups. And as you all know, right now we are heavy, heavy in COVID and we're heavy in COVID cycle number two, sadly. I think we're just about to see that second rise. So knowing that denominator through the census um, count is so important in the delivery of healthcare. It certainly is. And I'm just gonna pause for a moment just to let those who are watching us online know right now, anyone who may need a little help in filling out that census form or, or just might have some questions uh, as far as how to do so, if you'd like to do so on a later date, we do have volunteers online right now. They are standing by. If you want assistance completing your census form, you can reach one of them, one of those volunteers tonight from 7 to 7.30, so for the next half hour or so, by dialing 833-637-6392. That's 833-63-SMDWC. And once again, if some of you are out there writing that number down, I'll um, read that to you again. That's eight. 833- Three three six three seven six three nine two, and you see it there on your screen. And once again, we do have volunteers standing by to answer your questions and also to help you fill out that form. And what a great opportunity to do so, because as our panelists have stated, it really just takes a few minutes. And I can testify to that. I uh, put it off and put it off, and um, when I finally did it, I was. <laughs> I said to myself, why did I wait to do so? Because really, it just took a few minutes to fill that form out. And you'll feel so much better having done it and know that you're making a, a difference in your own way here in the community because we are all in this together. I, we continue to talk about all the ways in which it really uh, makes a difference uh, for those to participate uh, both locally and nationally. And I'd like to um, bring... Um, Lynn, back into the discussion, uh, if I can. Uh, Lynn Sprung, if you could just talk again, please, uh, some more, because you, you really touched on it, but just some of the specific ways as far as maybe the health issues that might be more prevalent in, in our local communities here, ways in which monies from the um, census count, the monies that we get for 
uh, public health, how it impacts our community and can help provide resources. So it can certainly, uh, it can certainly do that. So as I was saying, when we are able to count uh, the numbers of individuals who are disproportionately affected by these healthcare issues, uh, then we're able to focus our resources and time on those areas in which the community needs us most. So if we know that in our South Fulton area, just like in Atlanta, uh, diabetes, hypertension, um, you know, some cancers that we have, we know that we can focus our resources on that. I think something else that we touched on a bit uh, during the discussion is, uh, is the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think it's very interesting uh, to note that in some of the seminars that I've been in, uh, there was a definite correlation for instance, between our numbers of people in our community, so the census, and how prepared or not prepared we were as a country, if you will, for uh, the pandemic, just because of, uh, I know you all heard the, the issues around PPE, how many masks we had and how many respirators we had. I mean, all of those things, you know, if we have a prepared federal government, uh, they can adequately supply our communities with emergency uh, supplies and protections that we need, not only during a pandemic, but national emergencies. Uh, when I think of just things, day-to-day -day emergency services, uh, the, all of those are so greatly affected uh, by, again, that denominator that Leanne has talked about, the census number. And that um, census is very easy uh, to take. I think all of us have commented on that. And it is just so important for us in healthcare. And staying on, on the top of the healthcare right now, Leanne, are there any areas that you would point to where perhaps uh, we have some, some catching up to do or, or some work to do where if we're actually counted here in Georgia, we might really be able to make some inroads there over the next 10 years. Well, I think your point or, or the, the group's point about the undercounted African-American male is very important. Um, and I think just making sure everyone in the household is counted on that census form is important. And um, debunking the fear that people have in accurately displaying that on their census form is important because that helps with social distancing, which is so important with COVID-19, as you know. And then um, the only other thing I wanted to add, just to uh, augment what Lynn was saying, is that um, believe it or not, the highest correlate factor, the correlating factor to death in COVID-19 is obesity. And we know that obesity is something that we're all dealing with. Um, you know, being in Georgia and working in, tr in uh, trauma systems, we call the um, I-20 line, the belt line, right? That belt line is that stroke belt. And, and, and a lot of those rural communities and then, and then maybe perhaps uh, in different areas of Atlanta, we really need to calculate um, how many people are in the home and we need to look at their healthcare disparities because obesity is a huge factor. So I just wanted to throw that out, not specifically related to the census, but something that we all need to be committed to changing in Atlanta and particularly in South Atlanta. Yeah, very importantly, and thank you for making that point. Vanessa, what's the bottom line here? What is at stake if this, during this opportunity that we have, if we are not all counted as Georgians, if, you know, all of the people who have the opportunity to do so, to be counted, don't make the most of this opportunity, don't participate in this effort? Well, one, um, thank you for once again for that question. What everyone other panelists have already said, if we're not counted, several things. First of all, we talk about the funding, but let's not forget our representation in the, you know, the seats, the House and Congress. Right now we have seats now in Georgia, 14 seats now. We can't afford to lose those seats. We need to gain, maintain or gain those seats. Not only that, and as the panelists have stated, the, the different programs that are, are at stake. 
one thing I think about is our children are at stake. You know, our children under five that are undercounted. These young children are normally missed on the census. Um, they live with large extended families. We talk about the schools, education, the programs that's provided by the schools. If we, you know, there's so much at stake at this time. I think about education. I think about the SNAP program. I think about the Section 8 housing. I think about the Medicare, Part B, and Medicaid and Medicare. What's at stake? We have our children health insurance program. We have our school breakfast program. We have unemployment insurance, community development. The list goes on and on. We have the housing and food assistance. Even thinking about the community, we have like the libraries and a community center at stake. We have first responders, for example, the firefighters. We have hospitals and, you know, like I said, schools. We have so much at stake right now if we do not respond to the census. In addition to that, we think about redistricting, and oftentimes we don't talk about that a lot. But when you think about the redistricting at the national, the state, and local levels, all of that is at stake. We think about congressional and state legislative districts. We think about school districts. We think about voting precincts. All of this is at stake if we fail to respond and respond now to the 2020 census. Um, Vanessa, and unfortunately, just like those who don't vote because they feel their one vote doesn't matter, you still have so many people who don't believe that they're filling out that census form if they don't do it, that that really makes a difference. Uh, and then you'll have some people who, you know, may have lost the uh, the document that came in the mail or or who don't remember how they're supposed to do it. Uh, if you just talk about that, uh, just how easy it is to find that information or to find someone who can help connect you to that. Yes. If you do not have, if you've misplaced or lost the mail and the reminders with, with the census ID on there, you can still respond to the 2020 census. All you would need to do is go to my2020census.gov. You click on Start Here, and where they have the question the ID, you don't have an ID number, but what you can do, there's a, a link under that where you can respond without an ID. It's with your address. So all you would need to do is to go to my2020census.gov, click on Start Here, and you click on the button right under, it tells you if you do not have your ID, click here, and you can just put in your address and complete your 2020 census. And it really so you is can't very use easy. your address. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm sorry, easy. I didn't mean to cut you off. You were saying? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You're, I, I agree with you. Very, you're right. It's very easy. It's very it's simple easy and do. easy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And once again, uh, just to remind those who are watching online that we are making it very easy for you. If you have questions, if you need help filling out the census, uh, we do have volunteers who are standing by right now to help you. They'll be there till 7.30. Once again, that number is 833-637-6392. That's 833-637-6392. And there's someone there who will answer that phone for you and who will help you get through this. It will probably uh, take you maybe just a couple of minutes overall, but it really is very simple to do. And once again, we have that number there for you on the screen, 833-637-6392. And uh, ladies, our, our group of panelists, I'm gonna ask you all individually just to talk about uh, from your own perspective, What's really uh, at stake here? What's really important to you all? Why someone should take a moment and, and fill that out if they have, for instance, misplaced their census form or, um, you know, they may have thrown it away because they just didn't think it was that important. Why they really want to make sure that they participate this year despite all that's going on. Uh, and Ladisa, I'm going to start with you. It's important to me personally because um, I love this country and the census was written into our founding documents even before uh, Black Americans were even considered um, uh, separate in the count um, and they were a representative of their owner. But today 
we are all American citizens. We have the rights and privileges uh, embedded in these historic institutional documents and the census is very important and it only occurs every 10 years and it's it's an opportunity to engage in our uh, our uh, the process that's established to determine accurate information about the population it it, it it's personal to me too because of a favorite book of mine called numbers which is very historical and it talks about capturing an accurate count of people. So this is not unique to our country, but it's so important and it's foundational to how we establish policy and uh, distribute funds. And of course, for the seniors, my, my love and passion for the Department of Senior Services. So uh, that's my little spiel on why it's so important. All right, thank you so much, Ladisa. Uh, let me ask you the same question. Why does it matter? Why is it so important to you personally? Well, I certainly can't say it any better than Ladisa just said. Uh, I think in addition to that, you know, it is the basis, the census is the basis for enforcing uh, the Voting Rights Act. And it's so important for us to note that, uh, to be at the polls in November, and to do what we need to do there uh, in light of all the protests that have been going on and the Black Lives Matter campaign. You know, we need to uh, make certain that, it, that it's well understood uh, how many of us are driving the economic engine of this country. And in order to do that, we have to be counted. And it's extremely important for us to do that. Uh, so I think that's really what makes it important to me personally, and I certainly can't say anything um, without including hospitals and healthcare in that. Uh, one of the things that I think is also a major uh, issue that we have to solve as a community is just mental health, and I think we're undercounted there, and we need to make sure that we get to uh, the right numbers so that our mental health services can catch up with the need. Uh, mental health issues, that is a very good point there. Thank you, Lynn. And uh, Leon, I'll ask you uh, the same question. Uh, your, your personal feelings, why is it so important for people just to take, take the time to fill that census out? Well, I'm, you know, I, uh, had, were, I was sent probably three or four of the envelopes myself and finally I decided I have to do this, I have to get it done. And I think the dull nagging pressure of filling out that form is excellent. And I think Atlanta does an amazing job, but just educating everyone on how easy that is, is really important. You think it's this daunting exercise and it's really not. Second, I think the representation couldn't be overstated. So representation in every way, whether it's mental health, healthcare, senior services, being represented by an accurate count um, changes everything in terms of the judicial system and how Congress is, uh, you know, uh, allocated, and then of course um, our House of Representatives, and then finally again that denominator factor for the disproportionate share um, funds that healthcare got, gets. Knowing how many patients we were really taking care of and being represented in the census couldn't be more important. But thank you for thank you for letting me speak. Yeah, it certainly is so important, and thank you, Leanne, for joining us today. Vanessa, I think it's fitting that you have the final word on this, just the importance and, and your personal perspective on the importance of the census. Yes, um, I'll tell you this, it is very important. I'm very passionate about it because for me, it's like a do-over. It's to, to make up for lost time for the years that I was not counted. Um, I didn't realize until after the age of 60 the importance of the census. And I realized I don't get to do this over again. We don't get a do-over. It's every 10 years. I know we vote every two and every four years, but we don't get this a do-over and have an opportunity to be counted. Coming up and living in New, in New Orleans, Louisiana, I'm from the Lower Ninth Ward. And oftentimes we were not counted. And when I go home today, I look at the roads, primarily the roads, the potholes, we're still paying for not being counted. Mm -hmm. So now is the time. And I always say, now is the acceptable time to be counted. If not us, who? If not now, when? 
Now is the time. Let's all be counted. Now is the time. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Vanessa. And thank you to all of our panelists for taking the opportunity and the time to talk to uh, all those out here today, listening in and watching and, and taking advantage of this service and, and taking part in this forum. It, it's just wonderful that you all uh, gave up your time and your talents and joined in this conversation today. And we so appreciate you. Thank you so much. At this time, I'm going to turn things over to Southern Metro Democratic Women's Council's Kathy Adams, uh, who is actually, I'm going to say, my line sister, <laughs> Delta Sigma Theta. Hello, Soror. Thank you so much. Hello, hello, and thank you very much for your kind words. Ladies, it has truly been a pleasure, and thank you to everyone who is online and who has joined us uh, this evening. This has been a fantastic journey, and uh, as Deidre so um, kindly mentioned, I am the immediate past uh, state president of Georgia Federation of Democratic Women. This is one of the chapters across the state that is um, uh, pushing uh, participation in the census, and we are also doing that uh, as part of our one of our Panhellenic uh, initiatives uh, within the Greek organization as well. Um, we need to understand the purpose of the census, but we need to also understand this is a once in a lifetime for some, but this phenomenon only occurs every 10 years. It's been said over and over again this evening, but I wanted to reiterate that because for a lot of people, especially a lot of those who are marching, our millennials and our generation Xers who are out there protesting and marching, understand what's going on around you, but understand how you can make change happen. Change is constant. If you want to get engaged and you want to see something different, get engaged in the process. Be counted, vote, and that's where it starts. And we have to own some of that accountability. So let me not belabor that, but I want to talk to you about the importance of the census and then some of the things that we have going on here as a part of the educational process. Tonight is not a one and done situation. We will continue to educate um, our citizens. Uh, we will continue to do that in a virtual uh, environment using the platforms available to us. But um, we have two additional forums that are coming up. Uh, one is on, uh, it's coming up in July, and it'll be on July 28th at 6.30 p.m. And, the, and the, that's our second forum. The third forum will be on September 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Do uh, mark your calendars, save the date, plan to join us. And, um, you know, again, get engaged in the process, be counted. There are three simple steps that you can take if you don't have the postal mailing that was sent to you, if you can't find your envelope, that's okay. And we don't care if the dog ate it, we don't care what happened to it, even if you didn't get one. You can still participate in the census. Log on to www.2020census.gov and answer those nine questions. It takes less than five minutes to complete. Right. If you don't have access to a computer or if you don't have access to internet, go to your local library and use the library's computer to log in and participate in the census. Again, you know, the ladies have shared the importance of the census, what the dollars are used for, and I can tell you, uh, it's been said over and over again, each person that participates, the community gains about $2,500 per person. So we need to make sure that the, the money goes back to our local municipalities and that, you know, it's used to help support infrastructure, healthcare, education, uh, roads, those types of things. So it uh, goes to good use. And then lastly, if you don't have access, if you don't make it to a library, that's okay. You can call and participate in the, tw in the 2020 census by dialing 1-844-330-2020 after tonight's call. But during tonight's call, you can call us and we will help walk you through that. You can call us at one 833 637 6392. And those lines will be open until 7.30 p.m. tonight. Uh, but again, if you want to participate online, uh, you know, just answering the questions online, um, you can do so at 2020census.gov, or you can call the 800 number at any time to participate in the 2020 census and answer those nine questions at 1-844-330-2020. Everyone, onus is on you to be counted. It also helps to drive, your participation will help to drive and draw the electoral districts. That is, um, it helps to determine who gets elected. You know, in Georgia, we have, uh, what, 14 uh, congressional districts. 
would stand the opportunity of gaining an additional congressional district. And so with your participation, we can do that. Um, but where that, those, those lines are drawn and where those boundaries lie um, will be up to you. If you don't participate, then we won't have a say so in where they go because again, the majority rules in that situation. So um, want to say thank you again for joining us this evening. We have a motorcade that's coming up uh, and uh, it's a seniors motorcade where we will engage everyone in uh, information about the 2020 census and uh, actually encourage people to, to vote, register to vote. We have an election that's coming up, a runoff election on August 11th. We know you stood in long lines wherever you were, not only here in our large metro counties, but we also encourage you to get engaged in early voting and absentee voting. So the motorcade will be on August 1st. Look for information on the South Metro Democratic Women's website. And uh, that information will be forthcoming about lineup and location. Again, thank you, everyone. And we so graciously appreciate you uh, participating in this evening's um, census forum. Be counted. So now, Ms. Gloria, uh, did you want to say a few closing words? Uh, we have Linda uh, coming up next. She's on and ready to go. Linda Pritchett. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'd like to um, say this in Spanish for any of the um, Spanish speaking persons, Latino, Hispanic persons um, that would like to participate, that we want to participate in the census. Para todos que están en esta llamada y quieren participar en el census, um, si necesitan asistencia, pueden llamar el teléfono 833-637-637. 6392. Si necesita asistencia con la aplicación para el census, llama ese teléfono y te podemos ayudar. También tenemos dos reuniones para, el, para, de, para hablar del census, sobre el la tema del census, junio, jul, julio 28 a las, a las seis y media de la, de la noche y en septiembre 20, 22 a las seis y media por la noche en este mismo en este mismo uh, reunión. Thank you, Linda. We appreciate you and your Spanish speaking skills. I would like to certainly say thank you to our committee who did a fantastic job of planning the series of forums and I'm sure Everybody who's on tonight will be back with us on July 28th. And the motorcade that Kathy mentioned is Seniors for Justice. That will take start out in Chattahoochee Hills and go as far up as West End Atlanta. We'll be picking up riders and cars along the way. And I'm going to offer a bonus for the city that has the largest number of cars. So get your city organized. You may win some money. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and have a great evening.